ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at. Um, so we found our we found our function f of x. f of x equals x plus two, and f inverse of x equals x minus two. Now let's go and see why, why did this work? Why did that give us our function? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph these on the same set of axes. So to graph these real quick, one, two, and then up one over one, left one down one. So we go up two. Our next point would be like there. Next point there. Right? That is your function, f of x equals x plus 2. Does everybody see that? OK. Let's go ahead and graph f inverse of x. That's at negative 2. Parallel, Parallel lines, you're right. Now, a function and its inverse are not always going to be parallel. Okay. Um, and that's going to be a case that I'll show you in our next example. We'll see if those are going to produce parallel lines or not. Um, but what I want you guys to understand, inverse functions are not always parallel. But what inverse functions do is they provide us with a reflection over a line. They are reflected over each other over what we call the f of x or y equals x line. Okay, so all inverses. This case is special because these are actually um, these are actually parallel lines. But you notice the one thing I don't want you to do, don't get hooked up on parallel lines because I'll show you another example where they're not parallel. What I want you guys to understand is inverses are reflected over each other over the y equals x line. All right. Now, when looking at that, how is that going to help us out. Like if, a gra if I graph something, I said, you know, find the inverse, Dimitri, what you do is you just reflect it over this line. So how, what's a good way of understanding how to reflect over the line? Well, let's go and take a look at a point, all right? Um, and I don't want to get uh, too strung up, but let's look at the point 0, 2. <coughs> so if you guys look at the 0, 2, that's for f of x, and here's f inverse of x. Okay, On my function f of x, you guys are going to be the next to kind of move away. So if you guys look at my inverse of f of x, I have x, y. Right? Now, I know I didn't graph the most beautiful function over here. But if this one's up 1 over and this one up over 2, if you notice on f inverse of x, what is this point? 2 comma 0. So what do you guys notice about f f of x compared to f inverse of x of their coordinate points? Yeah, they're switched. So when dealing with f of x and f inverse of x, what you're simply going to do, no, is you're going to swap your x and y's. So if I give you a set of coordinate points and I say find the inverse of those, you're going to swap the x and the y coordinates, and that will give you the, f, the points in the f inverse. All right? And we'll go through um, an example for that. So. That's pretty much your guys' example, kind of understanding the inverses. Sorry.